Hi, I'm John from Tent World, and here today I've got with me the Dometic CF11. It's a brand new model of fridge out from Dometic. It's an upgrade from the CDF11. The CDF11 was a very popular fridge for a very long time in Australia. It's the smallest compressor fridge in the Dometic, or previously known as Waco range. The reason for that is due to the portability of it. So it was very popular with truckers, with guys who want a fridge but don't need a large fridge and get value from the portability. So the CF11 comes with this carry strap uh, so you can easily put it over your shoulder. It's now able to plug into your mains power 240 volts, 12 volt or 24 volt if you're in a truck or a 24 volt vehicle. It has the ability to hold drinks in the front do note though that these drink holders are quite small, so if you want to use a stubby cooler, you're going to have trouble if it's a thicker one, you'll need a very thin stubby cooler. So the idea with this is that it would fit nicely in the middle seat, so if in a four-wheel drive, say, if you put it out the back, you can put it in the middle seat between perhaps your two kids. Some people I know have torn out the centre console of their car and installed this in there. That's a really great option. Uh, so the CF11 weighs 8.5 kilos, so it's nice and portable. It's got a 10.5 litre capacity, so it's got a nice simple latch to open it here. And so let's have a look and see how usable this space is. I think you'll be quite surprised for such a small unit what you can do with it. So another popular use for the CF11 might be if you live out of town and you want to do some grocery shopping, but you don't want to worry about your food going off, or perhaps you've bought a bunch of ice cream and you need to keep it cold um, until you get home. So this fridge will give you that flexibility without the big imposition of putting a, a very large fridge in the back of your car that can be heavy or difficult to move. So let's have a look and see what different things we can put in. Now the first thing I'd like to point out is that they have made, they have put this dimple in the top of the fridge here and down the bottom there's a little bit of a recess here as well that will allow you to put a bottle of wine in the bottom there and then you can close it and actually seal the lid. So if you're going on a longer road trip to visit some friends, you've got the ability to put at least a single bottle of wine in the fridge and keep it nice and chilled until you arrive. That's one really great feature. If you want to put two, what you have to do for the second one, because there's only the one dimple, is to put it like that. You can then also fit a bottle of milk in there. So this is just a regular two litre bottle of milk and it fits in there nicely. A can of beer, this is a 375 ml can of beer that can fit in the little dairy compartment. So the dairy compartment in this fridge is slightly warmer so all of your cooling plates for this fridge are along the walls on the inside here and then you've got this little area here uh, where things that you don't want slightly as cold, obviously you want your beer as cold as possible, but that's a great place to put it all the same for a couple of extras. So in there you can see that there's still some space so you can fit cans in the back there. And you can fit another one in the back there too. So as you can see, you've got quite a bit of space there. There's a little bit of space there underneath uh, the white wine as well. So you can put a fair bit in there. It's not the biggest fridge, and if you want that, then there's plenty of other larger fridges. The idea of this fridge is convenience, portability, and simple to use. Taking a look at the front of the fridge now, we can get a bit of a closer look at the sockets. So this is your 240 volt socket. You'll notice that that shape is very, very familiar. That's the same as what most of your computers use, your TVs use. So if you ever misplace this socket or this plug, most likely you've got a couple of these spare at home. I know I've got half a dozen sitting in the cupboard. You can go ahead and just use that. That's no concern at all. you then got your 12 and 24 volt socket here. You can have both of them plugged in at the same time. These are the cables that it comes with. Take a look at that. Bet you recognise that. And this is probably the only stuff up that I think Dometic have made with this fridge is that they've supplied the cable with this fridge on an L. But as I said, you've got plenty of these in the cupboard at home. So if you don't like the L, go and swap it for another one. So that can go in there. You can plug 
your 12 volt cable in at the same time, that's the socket for it there. Now take a look at this socket here, so that's your cigarette lighter adapter. If you unscrew this, you've then got a hella socket. That's a much nicer connection and is popular in some camper trailers. So that's a hidden little thing, lots of people don't realise that that's there. And that just twists on and off like that. So as I said, you can have them both plugged in at the same time. When you have them both plugged in at the same time, it will always choose your mains power over 12 volt power if it's available. So in the instance of say you're driving and you want to leave this plugged in, perhaps you've hardwired it into your car. But you've got this sitting at the side here and so you arrive at a powered site. Maybe you plug your whole vehicle in or perhaps it's part of a motorhome that's got entire mains power wiring through it. When you do that, this will just switch over. You don't have to worry about unplugging things and, and replugging things like you used to have to with the CDF11. So that's a really nice upgrade to this one. So now let's have a look at the operation of it and the control panel. When you keep it full with solids, that's basically storage. It's, it's holding energy within the fridge. If you keep it empty with air, uh, well one, just turn it off if it's completely empty, but two, if it's full of air, it's very difficult to keep air cold. So if you ever open the lid and you've only got one or two things in there, you're going to lose all that cool. So the best thing is, is fill it with water bottles, you know, whatever. Keep it full and that'll make your fridge run most efficiently and, will, and reduce the amount of cycles that it needs to go through. So let's plug it in. So you'll notice, you may not be able to notice, that when it's plugged in, even though I haven't turned it on yet, the LED light on the fridge is now on. So now I'll press the button and I'll be quiet. So hopefully you can hear that. Now I'll show you some of the operations of the fridge. So all of your controls happen here. So when you're just driving along, you can accidentally press these and you don't have to worry. That's not going to do anything. You can also accidentally press that. That's not going to do anything. You have to hold that down to turn it off like this. It's back on again. So to get into the settings of the fridge, what you need to do is hold down the set button. Like so. And that can go all the way down to minus 18. So if you wanted to run it as a freezer, I personally like my drinks at about minus two or minus three. I really like that. You can then go to the next setting, which is if you want to run in Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. Obviously, we want degrees Celsius. And then this is your battery voltage selector. So you've got the options of low. So low is if you've got a dual battery system or you're running this fridge from a battery where its main priority is running this fridge, not starting a vehicle or anything else. So if your priority is um, keeping your food cold and you have a second battery, then always choose low. That's the best setting. If, however, you need to be able to start your car, you don't have a dual battery system, I would choose high. If you'd like your fridge to run for a fair while and um, you'd like to discharge the battery a little bit, then choose medium. It's a safe voltage for being able to start your vehicle and it's a suitable uh, choice for, you know, if you're day tripping around the place, you're stopping for a few hours here and there, it'll mean your fridge continues to run no matter what. It's a really good setting there. So you choose the right setting depending on the vehicle that you're using and the battery setup that you've got. So now let's have a bit of a look around the fridge. So down here where the cables are you can see there's a ventilation fan. So there's a little fan in there sucking in air. Around the sides here that air is coming off from inside the fridge and it's I can feel air coming out of here. 
So it's really important when you install this fridge in your vehicle that you make sure that all of these venting areas are not blocked. If you block these, it's going to make your fridge inefficient or at worst, it might actually overheat and shut down. It will overheat and shut, shut down, but it won't damage the fridge when that happens. It's got built-in safety for that. But all the same, if you've got something in there that's important to you, you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we can take a look inside the fridge here, and I'll just get rid of this cable. You can see that interior LED that I was talking about. I'll just show you this can in there again. So this is the two litre bottle. And you can see in here, there's that can and there's the wine. You've got the option with this latch that holds the lid, off, lid open. You can get rid of that if you want. And then you can let your lid fall all the way to the back like that. I don't know why you'd want that, but it's a possibility. And so, for those of you who are familiar with the CDF11, the CF11 is using the exact same mould. So if you know that the CDF11 fits in a particular space, then this new CD CF11 will fit for sure. So there you have it folks, that's the CF11. If you're after a small, powerful little fridge, it is a very powerful little fridge. The compressor in this is disproportionately large to the volume of space that it looks after. I've spoken to customers that say that they've put as many beers as they can or drinks in there and they're cold in half an hour. That's really great performance. Remember, whenever you're using a fridge like this, always use it full. If you're testing it, put more than one beer in there, put more than one drink in there. It, this fridge doesn't have a fan inside there to push the air around, so keeping it full makes it run really efficiently. It's really important to remember that with all portable refrigeration. Well, there you have it. If you've got any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, let us know. We're out here trying to help you make the informed decisions on the best camping gear for you. Uh, otherwise, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.